Well, let me start with this. It was a beautiful day when my father died. The first beating I can recall, I uh, was on the floor when it was finished. My head hurt, my ears were ringing, and um, I had a nauseated feeling from taking a punch to the stomach. I got up, and that one button on my shirt was torn off and another one was undone. Uh, he straightened up and walked out of the room. I went to my bed. Uh, I was seven, he was 34, and uh, I was his son. He was my father, and it was a beautiful day when my father died. It wouldn't be for 40 years until I could forgive that man. And in my defense, he was a triple-A dad, alcoholic, abuser, and an adulterer. The downside is that within 20 years, I became like my father. I violated my own moral code. I was violent towards my small family and strangers, and I battled uh, some pretty dark addictions for a while. Looking back, I can see there are three reasons why I didn't forgive him. And after doing work with so many people over the last several decades, I can see that those reasons pop up over and over again. They're the same ones. So I'm gonna share those reasons. And if you find yourself in there, maybe you will hopefully realize that it's time to forgive. First, some opening remarks about forgiveness. As Sven said, uh, yeah, everybody loves the idea of forgiveness and until we have to do it. And then all of a sudden, you know, I don't want to. S second, uh, there's not one size fits all for forgiveness. There are at least three types of forgiveness and each one has a very specific application. So it's important to understand what forgiveness is and how to apply it before you try it. Also, forgiveness is not just one and done. Especially people that we are related to or that we love, they have more access to our souls and so their offenses can cut us deeper. So forgiveness often is like an onion that you uh, find one layer is interesting and another really makes you cry. And also, this is the one that most people are surprised by. Forgiveness is hard, but so is a lack of forgiveness. So you have to pick your heart. At least with forgiveness, the difficulty and the pain finally ends, and the result is freedom and healing. When you choose not to forgive, the pain continues, and you continue to have broken and damages in your life. So pick your heart, but at least one leads to freedom and healing. Okay, let's talk about the three reasons why people don't forgive. Um, as I mentioned, there are three of them, and here's the first one. People want revenge. I, I did. But that means I, that I misunderstand forgiveness. I'm confusing forgiveness with justice, and there are two separate things. You can get justice and never forgive your offender. And you can forgive your offender with never getting justice. So um, they're not the same thing. Also, this type of revenge can take an active or a passive form. The active forms are usually illegal, so you don't do them, you know. Um, but the passive forms are the ones that most of us participate in. We will replay the event in our minds like some horror, twisted horror film that we're the star of, except we rewrite the ending where we win we have the snappy comeback or the, or the right punch or the way to humiliate or embarrass our offender. And we take some sort of weird satisfaction in that, forgetting that we are just repeating the trauma to ourselves over and over. 
Another way that revenge takes a passive form is in personal relationships. We withhold physical or emotional intimacy. In a professional setting, it could be the withholding of your best ideas, your creativity. You uh, don't support your colleagues or your bosses and you allow them to fail. But you need to remember that revenge and trying to get even is always poison. It's poison that you drink hoping that your offender dies. Okay, reason number two. This is the right to be morally superior, another barrier to forgiveness. In some circles, you just call this arrogance. I'm embarrassed to tell you that for those 40 years and since then, I was very active in a faith community. I was uh, part of an organization that as one of the cornerstone values is forgiveness, but I never gave it to my father. Clearly, knowing the right thing and doing the right thing are two separate things. But you don't have to be religious to practice forgiveness. It definitely has a mental, emotional, and spiritual therapeutic value. The one thing about arrogance and people who claim to be morally superior or act like they're morally superior is that in the end, they really lack empathy for their fellow human beings. What my father did was crummy, was, was bad. But I came to realize that he was just as broken as I was. The difference is, I had good men who put the brakes on me, and my father never did. Also, arrogance and moral superiority sounds something like this. When you retell the story of how you were harmed or taken advantage of, a betrayal, a theft, adultery, assaults, physical or sexual, you, you tell the story as if you're shocked and surprised how awful people can be. And I can assure you, we can be pretty awful sometimes. Everybody can be the worst version of themselves. And so whenever you are that morally superior, arrogant person tells a story, they're acting as if they're above it and we're not. Remember that to prevent arrogance, recognize that all of us are broken at some level. The third reason why people don't forgive is, and this may be the most controversial one, people like being a victim. They want to remain a victim. Now, before you check out, hear me out. First of all, what is a victim? Well, a victim is somebody that has an event happen to them from outside, right? That they're not responsible for. It could be an auto accident, economic forces beyond their control, the weather, a crime. You're a victim. You were responsible for those events. But when you remain a victim, when you continue to hang on to that identity, you are forever latching yourself to the worst history in your life, maybe to the worst person in your life, which continues to leach that negative energy and poison into your soul, harming you. And what is the benefit of being a victim? Why do people do it? Well, there is a twisted benefit. And that is, if I'm a victim, whenever someone who cares about me tries to give me helpful, useful feedback about my habits, the way I think or whatever I'm doing, I can put up the victim identity as a shield and say, well, you don't know what it's like to be the alcoholic child, or, I mean, the child of an alcoholic father. You don't know what it's like to be the victim of patriarchy or whatever it might be, it doesn't matter. The victim status, that identity in preventing good information from coming to you is actually harming you. And the other important thing about victim status is that you can be an authentic victim of something really terrible but also be a horrible human being at the same time with terrible character. The two can go together. When you are a victim, you are in absolute need of healing and freedom. So the longer you hold on to that identity, the longer you prevent your own freedom and healing. Okay, let me sum this up then. Get rid of revenge, it's poison to you. It actually harms you more than anyone else. Stop being morally superior. Stop being arrogant. We're all capable of the worst version of ourselves and we're all broken at some level. 
and stop claiming your victim status so you can begin to heal and grow. Still, you might be wondering, why should I forgive? I mean, if I forgive the other person, I'm letting them off the hook. No, you're letting yourself off the hook, a hook of bitterness that's harming you and poisoning you. If I forgive them, I'm saying that what they did is okay. Absolutely not. Forgiveness requires recognizing what happened to you might be completely awful, immoral, and unacceptable at any level. So why forgive? Well, let me invite you into your own limitless life. First of all, we need you. Your family and your friends need you. Your organizations need you to be at your best. And one of the most effective tools in your emotional, mental, and spiritual health toolbox is forgiveness. When you practice the art of forgiveness is when you step into your limitless life. Now I'd like to give you a final thought. I love my dad. I miss him. The things that happened to me, I wouldn't wish on anybody. But I love him. I love the things I once hated because they made me who I am. And I've learned over the years that you can't help somebody with wounds, injuries, and scars unless you have a few of your own. So this is why I can say that it was a beautiful day when my father died. Thank you. Thank you.